Hello and welcome to Penguin TV. It is recorded by George Eflis, a.k.a. Wiffy Penguin, and you can follow me on Twitter at Wiffy Penguin. Penguin TV is hosted by PureMTGO.com and sponsored by MTGOTraders.com. Get an 8% discount off all orders over $50 when paying with PayPal or credit card. And you can check out KeepYourGames.com and get an extra 20% off when trading paper for digital. Enjoy the videos. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another Penguin TV. Uh, this week we've got Four Color Snapster in Classic. This is a new deck. Um, mine is modeled mostly off of Brian DeMar's uh, list that he posted in an article a few weeks ago. He played in the uh, Mana Drain Open. And then also, in Classic, Naoto played a list based off of that same article. And in between the article, um, Naoto's deck list, and my own testing, I have come to this pile of 60 cards. Um, I don't know if this pile is the best. I am still tweaking. Um, one of the cards that I have under the microscope right now is Flusterstorm. Uh, this is an amazing card versus blue decks, but unfortunately, the metagame, there there aren't as many blue decks in the metagame as I would like there to be to warrant Flusterstorm over something like Spell Pierce or more Artifact Removal. Um, I, do, I do really like the card, though, and if I cut it from the main deck, it would have to make its way to the sideboard, because it is really that good. But let's start with our mana base. We've got uh, 18 lands. I don't like that there's only 18 lands. It's a very mana-hungry deck. Uh, I had 19 lands in here for a long time. But I, I decided to just, you know, try the 18 out and see where I, uh, that got us. So with a four-color mana base, we are using a card that is often underutilized in Classic, and that is City of Brass. Very few decks want this, um, besides Dredge. There are a lot of specialty lands, and you also, if you're only running two colors, you don't need City of Brass, but if you're running three colors, you can make an argument for it. Usually you don't really need it, but four or more, and we've got, we've got four different colored uh, costs in our cards here, so City of Brass helps out. And it's also a great land to have uh, get wastelanded or strip mined because that one damage a, uh, a tap does add up. We've got two undergrounds, two tropicals, and uh, two volcanic islands. And then we also have one basic island and uh, one five fetch lands. These scalding tarns are scalding tarns because for a long time my 19th land was a mountain which I liked against the Workshop matchup, because uh, it let you get your color of removal if they ghost quartered you, and it was immune to Wasteland. Uh, we also have two Seed of the Synod. This is a concession to the blue spells and the Goblin Welder that we're playing. Um, Thirst for Knowledge, over here, requires for us to gain maximum value that we discard an artifact, and discarding Seed of the Synod is a great thing to discard. Also, Tinker. Tinker works pretty well with Seed of the Synod. Um, and lastly, for us, there's Goblin Welder, which, if Seed of the Synod's in play, we can get back a spent spell bomb or part of a broken up vault key. So, that's, those are some of the reasons for Seed. And then we've got two specialty lands. Uh, Riptide Laboratory is here for this pile. Goblin Welder is not a wizard, unfortunately. But Snapcaster Mage is a wizard. Uh, Riptide Lab is something that I never want to draw early, but if I can manage to force the game into turn 10 or so, then Riptide Laboratory starts gaining insane amounts of value. Um, if, if nothing else, even if you don't have the mana to um, bounce him and then replay one of your spells, at the very least, he fogs a creature every turn for three mana and two mana. 
Um, and then library. Library can do some damage. Um, unfortunately, you can also get greedy with Library of Alexander, which you'll see in my fourth uh, round. I got a little greedy, and I think I lost the game because of Library. Um, and then for our mana acceleration, we don't have a lot. And uh, we wouldn't even have Mana Vault if Tinker wasn't in our deck. <coughs> but we have a Mana Vault, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt. These are the best acceleration that we have online. And we're going to play them, because we need artifacts to fuel Tinker and Thirst for Knowledge. Uh, going straight into the base black-blue uh, control slash combo deck, uh, it wouldn't be one of these decks without these four cards. Some people may say Imperial Seal doesn't go into every deck, but it probably should. So we've got these three black tutors, and we also have a Tinker. Um... Tinker, we know, does Blightsteel and Vault Key shenanigans. And then the Tutors. The Tutors have an, in an interesting tension in this deck, uh, more so than in any other blue base control deck. So not only can you tutor for whatever spell you need, maybe a Force of Will or a Mana Drain, but with Snapcaster in the deck, you can eventually tutor again. And uh, one of my favorite applications of Snapcaster Mage is it'll be late in the game. And I will have either a Snapcaster in my hand or a Tutor in my hand. And then I draw the other part. All of a sudden, I have a Vault Key. Because I can Tutor for one part, draw it, or put it directly in my hand in the case of Demonic. And then Snapcast back the Tutor for the other part. Um, I think it's an insane value play, and it's one of my favorite, um, interactions in this deck. Another one, of course, would be Factor Fiction, end of turn, next turn, Snapcaster the Factor Fiction back, and draw anywhere in between four and eight cards. <coughs> All the while giving you more Snapcaster food, if, uh, you discard things. So, those are the tutors. And the tutors help because we have a lot of one ofs. One Goblin Welder, one Riptide Laboratory, one Tinker, um, one Bolt, one Fire Ice, two Nature's Claims, but still, you might want a tutor for them. One Ancient Grudge. Um, for our permission suite, we've got four Force of Will. And this deck actually runs a lot of blue cards, as opposed to most of the blue control decks that I normally play. This one has a lot of blue. We've got, a uh, 4, 8, 9, 13, 18, 19, 21, 23, 27 blue cards. Most of the blue decks I rock have about 21 or 22 blue cards. So uh, chances are that if you have two cards in your hand, or if chances are in your opening hand if you have a Force of Will, you will also have the other blue card. Um, so yep, yeah, Force of Will, you need this card. Uh, the format would be stupid without it. Unfortunately, it costs a hundred dollars, but uh, that sucks. But you know, then we got two metal misstep. Um, metal misstep is an interesting card. It allows us to have two free one-drop counters on turn two, or turn one if you drop a mana crypt. Um, because you can misstep for the Phyrexian mana, snap cast it, and misstep again. But mental misstep is really only at its finest when you're playing against blue decks. Or when you're trying to protect a Blight Steel from Swords Plowshares slash Path to Exile. Um, it doesn't really do a whole lot against workshops. And in the Dredge uh, post board games, it stomps on nature's claim. But there are a lot of workshops. And that's why there are only two metal missteps. There, are, I could probably see myself going to three or four if the metagame changed. But right now, two seems like the right number. And uh, we were talking about Flusterstorm earlier. Right now, I think for these events that are happening now, these should probably be Spell Pierce. Um, 
And the next time I take this deck out, I might change them to Spell Pierce. I'm not sure. And then we've got 4 Mana Drain, which is really what makes this deck tick. You're not going to be resolving Factor Fictions and Thirst for Knowledges on a uh, consistent basis without Mana Drain helping you. Um, I have them segregated from the other counter spells because with Snapcaster Mage, these this this is your engine right here, Mana Drain and Snapcaster Mage. You'll Mana Drain something, and then the next turn, you know, if you have anything, you'll draw you'll play a draw spell or a tutor, and uh, then the next turn, you can Snapcaster the Mana Drain back again, or you can Snapcaster back one of your draw spells. It's this is the glue that holds the deck together. And surprisingly, surpri this, this is what surprises me, is that there's only 18 land, and uh, only 16 of them produce blue mana. But, you can pretty consistently get two blue mana up by turn three at the latest. Um, if you've had uh, Force of Wills or other counter spells to help you, or removals, you should be in a position where you mana drain something and start taking away the game with your card advantage. Uh, we explained why Riptide Lab is here. And then here's Goblin Welder. Now, Goblin Welder is an interesting card. It's one of my favorite cards, if, if it not in this format, in the game. I'm just a fan of what you can do with Goblin Welder. He is so versatile. Um, in the workshop matchup, he can, do, he can do some things. The most recent incarnation of decks, however... Most of their um, permanents are lands, spheres, or creatures. So he's losing a little bit of value. Um, it's hard to justify welding out a Thorn of Amethyst for a Phyrexian Revoker that will just shut off Goblin Welder. However, in conjunction with our five removal spells, he is pretty fantastic. And <clears throat> if Goblin Welder weren't amazing in the Workshop matchup, he certainly is against decks that actually have a way to interact with Voltaic Key. Um, I've won a lot of games with Goblin Welder on the table that I would not have because they had Nature's Claims or Ancient Grudges or Quasali Pride Mages or Counter Spells. And Goblin Welder just helps get there. He's a one of. Um, the deck is not built around him, but I think that the versatility he adds to the deck is just a great option to have. Um, one of the things I really like about this deck is that there are so many lines of play dependent on what order you draw your cards. Your games can play out a lot differently even though they'll look the same where you're just, you know, not tapping your land and snap casting at the end of turn. But there, with, uh, with the flashback and with the amount of draw and discard, there are so many options. And having the Goblin Welder just helps make some of these lines of play undefeatable. Uh, I'm a huge fan, and I would recommend that you guys try him out. I mean, we've got Cross Synergy with Thirst for Knowledge and Factor Fiction. We, we can use it to get rid of our own Mana Crypt or Mana Vault. I really, really like Goblin Welder. Um, so he helps with our Artifact Pile, Goblin Welder. And then Snapcaster helps with all of these cards, although I've, I have not, I don't think I've snapped back a uh, Force of Will. I may have, but I'm not sure that I have. And it's also got uh, application with all of these cards. So we've got um, a good, like, 20 or 25 cards that Snapcaster interacts with. And I think that this is the way to do it. Just everything in your deck can be recast. So we've got a Bolt, and we've got a Fire and Ice for creature control. Um, both of these are primarily for the fish matchup, but Lightning Bolt does kill Lodestone Golems. Uh, it kills a lot of the creatures out of the Workshop deck. So I like having this as an extra Workshop hate card, too. Fire and Ice can, can get two guys, um, I'm not sold on Fire and Ice. I don't like that it costs four mana to flashback with Snapcaster. And the only reason that it's still in the deck is because it does temporarily deal with a Blightsteel Colossus for at least one turn, if not two. Um, it also does things like 
tap uh, Maze of Ith if you're trying to get through with uh, your own blade steel. It's, it pitches the Force of Will as well, which I think is the reason that it gets played. Um, we've got an Ancient Grudge, which may be one of the best cards that you can possibly play against workshops. And then we've got two Nature's Claims that have the dual purpose of uh, beating up on Workshop and Oath of Druids. Um, Nile Spellbomb is not a card that Snapcaster Mage can interact with, but it is a card that Goblin Weller can interact with, as well as all of these tutors. Um, you have to draw this in your opening hand if you want to beat Dredge in Game 1. It's, it's a pipe dream to think that you will be able to play that out on turn 2 or 3 and still win the game. However, this card has a lot of value versus blue decks. Um, the question you have to ask yourself is, are blue decks a big enough part of the metagame to warrant having Nile Spellbomb in the main deck? Yes, you'll win um, your Game 1 Dredge matchup every now and again, but this card does almost nothing worth versus Workshops or Creature Decks. It's only real uh, Shining is in Game 2 against Dredge, as well as the blue control decks, because you can mess up a Yawgmoth's Will, you can mess up uh, Snapcaster Mages. So we'll see. We'll see if this card continues to get there. Um, we've got our Tinker Targets slash Tutor Targets over here, slash Goblin Welder Targets. Um, not much to say about these. They all win the game. Over here in our card draw, We've got our four Ubiquitous Brainstorm, best card in the format probably. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe Force of Will is the best card in the format. But Brainstorm, Brainstorm comes close, I think. It's power level. Okay, let's not say best card, let's say power. It's power level is really high, especially in decks with fetch lands. But I'm sure most of you either know this or have already heard it a gajillion times. Um, we have... One Sensi Top, which is a concession to both Tinker and Thirst for Knowledge, as well as just being a great card. We are a deck that does not want to tap out on our own turn, and Sensi's Divining Top helps us accomplish that amazingly well. Uh, we've got two Thirst for Knowledge, which are just, just low enough in the casting cost that we can actually hard cast them without much help. Um, they are, they dig, they fill the graveyard for Snapcaster, and they let you do some pretty nutty things with other Goblin Welders. Lots of, lots of synergy here. And then we've got a 1-1 one -one split of Factor Fiction and Jace Mind Sculptor. Both of these cards are in here for after you've cast the Mana Drain, and both of them will run away with the game if you cast them, and resolve them. Um, yeah, not much more to say about the main deck. If we go down here and look at our sideboard, we'll see a pretty, pretty diverse sideboard for the metagame. We've got four Leyline of the Void, a Surgical Extraction, and a Nile Spellbomb. And let's just reverse this order right here. So, these five, plus this, are fantastic against Dredge. Surgical Extraction is also good against Dredge. But it has applications in just about every matchup. I'm almost wondering if Surgical Extraction should be in the main deck instead of Nile Spellbomb, because it is just uh, more versatile. However, it does not cantrip. So the debate rages. Uh, with these seven cards, you have a much better shot against Dredge post board. And you've also got your all of your counter spells to stop nature's claims. Uh, speaking of Nature Claim, we've got Claim, Grudge, and Welder. All of these are against the Workshop match, as well as this Lightning Bolt. And I believe this Surgical Extraction is a good idea, too. You can uh, Force of Will or destroy one of their first spheres and then grab three more out of their deck. Could be useful. Especially if you manage to hit something like a Lodestone Golem and just take uh, a little bit of the teeth out of their deck. Nature's Claim also comes in for Oath of Druids, um, giving you 4 plus 4 removal for their win condition is pretty good. 
Old Man of the Sea and Lightning Bolt are for the fish matchups. I love Old Man of the Sea, as I said last week. He is great. Not only does he steal their guys, but it is totally a little old man humping the back of this uh, sailor's neck. It's quite ridiculous. And he's a djinn, even though he looks like, uh, I don't know, maybe Gandhi with a beard. He is indeed a magical creature. So that's it for the four-color deck tech. Uh, in the rounds, I played Workshop Round 1, Workshop Round 2, Workshop Round 3, and Hermit Druid in Round 4. So, uh, I'll see you for them. Have a good one.